Okay, so we're doing um, the cutaneous nerves of the upper limb today, which explains why I'm in a vest. And of course, I'm stuck at home because we're still part of the COVID lockdown. So I haven't got any models, haven't got anything else I can use, so I'm going to use me. Um, and the plan is to talk about the different nerves that innovate the different regions of skin in the upper limb, moving from the shoulder through the arm to the forearm to the wrist and hand. And... Um, I've worked out this much. I think Kim's gonna Hello. lend me some <laughs> some wool, and we'll use the wool to make the ah, cutaneous okay. nerve, shall we? What colours have you got? That should work. As usual, I've rehearsed this to death, so it should be perfect. Not making it up as I go along. Um, okay, so. Cutaneous nerves. If we're talking about cutaneous nerves, we're talking about nerves that are carrying sensory information back from the skin. That's the cutaneous bit. And we need a bit more terminology to be able to talk about this stuff. Right, okay, so this is the shoulder region, kind of around here. The joint is the glenohumeral joint. Now the arm is from the glenohumeral joint to the elbow. So this is the arm, also known as the brachium. The whole thing is the upper limb, you see. That's the axilla, the armpit, and from the elbow to the wrist, that's the antibrachium, or the forearm. And then we have the wrist, the carpus, and the hand. And we'll work our way down, but we're going to use those terms in the names of the nerves, and those nerves names are interchangeable. So like the, the medial cutaneous nerve of the, of the arm is the same as the medial brachial cutaneous nerve. Do you see what I mean? It's a bit red this, isn't it? The reason the cutaneous innervation of the skin of the limbs is useful is because one, you can test to see if the peripheral nerves are functioning normally and you can also get information about how much of the spinal cord is working normally. So the focus here is going to be on the peripheral nerves, where they come from, where they run, uh, the patches of skin that they supply, but at the end I'll try and remember to talk about the dermatomes, so the different regions and how they relate to spinal nerve roots. As we go down the upper limb, you should see a pattern forming. See if you can recognise that pattern and what it relates to. Okay then, so the skin up here, um, there are three nerves we can think of really, of kind of, of the shoulder region and the axilla. <laughs> um, we have the supraclavicular nerve, which comes from the neck. So yeah, this is going to be approximate, because not only are these nerves a bit variable, but I can't actually see what I'm doing to myself. But the supraclavicular nerve, and we could say it runs across here, right? The supraclavicular nerve is going to run superior to the clavicle. Here's the clavicle. So it's going to run from, I think it's roots are uh, C3 and C4 in the neck. It'll run out to the skin over the clavicle, over the superior part of the pectoralis muscles, over the superior part of the deltoid muscle, over the upper parts of trapezius and that sort of thing. So the supraclavicular nerve is innervating the skin over here. I really can't see where I put this, but... The axillary nerve, you may know because of his muscular job, the axillary nerve comes from the brachial plexus. It's spinal nerve roots of C5 and C6-ish. Brachial plexus. And that's not going to be anywhere near long enough. And is going to wend its way posteriorly Right, I've still got all my muscles on, so this isn't perfect, but you get an idea. It wends its way posteriorly around the surgical neck of the humerus to get up to this region here. <laughs> this, <laughs> this patch of skin here, this gets known as the, the sergeant's badge or the sergeant's patch. So the auxiliary nerve is going to innervate the deltoid muscle here, but it's also going to innervate the skin over the lateral part of the deltoid muscle, um, the sergeant's patch. Now this also gets called the superior lateral cutaneous nerve 
of the arm. Do you see why? So superior, so we're lateral here. So it gets called the superior lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm or the superior lateral brachial cutaneous nerve, whichever one you prefer, which means there must be a little bit more to the story here. But that's the axillary nerve. There's a little bit of fun here in that some of the skin of the axilla is innervated by a nerve that comes from the thorax. This is the intercostobrachial nerve. Intercosto, so it comes from an intercostal nerve. Um, there's often more than one, but the one most people talk about is the one that comes from the second intercostal nerve. So it comes from the T2 spinal nerve. This is going to be really approximate. But this runs... <laughs> this runs from the thorax then around the axilla to supply the skin of the axilla here. The reason, the main reason I know about this one is because when I teach this anatomy to anaesthetists if they block the brachial plexus expecting in a complete block of the upper limb there's usually or there will be a patch of skin here that the patient still has sensation for because it's innervated by the intercostobrachial nerve from the intercostal nerve so it hasn't been blocked because only the brachial nerve the, the nerves from the brachial plexus have been blocked right so that's the intercostobrachial nerve so you could group those as three nerves innervating skin kind of around the shoulder, supraclavicular, axillary and intercostobrachial, if that sort of thing helps you remember these things. Right, moving on to the arm. There is a medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and it comes from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. Up here. So <laughs> Imagine, medial cord of the brachial plexus, you know, it's, it's deeper than that, but I've got skin on. And the medial, so it's running deep to all this stuff, right? But the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm then runs down the medial side of the arm to innervate the skin on the medial arm. So medial cutaneous nerve of the arm or medial cutaneous brachial nerve from the medial cord, the brachial plexus. There's quite a lot of anatomy here. Um, if there's a medial one, there is a lateral one. Now, interestingly, the lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm is a branch of the radial nerve. So the radial nerve is going to innervate the muscles of the posterior compartment of the arm and the posterior compartment of the forearm, right? So it also has a bunch of cutaneous branches coming from it, and the, lat uh, the lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, or the lateral cutaneous brachial nerve, is a branch of the radial nerve. And the radial nerve is from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. So if these cutaneous branches of the axillary nerve get called the superior lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, then it's these branches down here of the radial nerve that get called the inferior cutaneous, so the inferior lateral cutaneous nerves of the arm. My arm's getting tired from holding it up. So the nerve innervating this patch of skin is the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm, or the posterior brachial cutaneous nerve, uh, and that is also a branch of the radial nerve. So we've got our radial nerve, you know, back here somewhere, I can't, I can't even see. And then this is going to be the... <laughs> this is going to be the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm. But they've all got good imaginations. I hope so. The important idea is that what this has given us is medial, a medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, a lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, and a posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm. And that's it, we've got to the elbow. So now we move on to the forearm, or the antebrachium. This is where stuff gets really cool, I and mean, we need some really long bits of wool. Right. The medial...
cutaneous nerve of the forearm or the medial antebrachial cutaneous nerve comes also directly from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. Yeah, directly from it, not from another nerve that runs down off of it and then becomes something else. No, the, the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm comes from the medial cord of the brachial plexus, then it runs down here with all of these guys. I'll probably tuck it in here, can't I? So if you've looked at the nerves of the upper limb, you'll know that down here we've got a whole load of blood vessels, we've got the ulnar and median nerves, we've got loads of stuff running through here. So the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm is also running down there, but it's a much smaller nerve, but it can still confuse people when they find all these things, trying to work out what's going on. Passes the elbow, gets into the forearm, and then it carries sensory innervation back from the medial compartment, the med sorry, the medial part of the skin of the forearm. If you thought that was good, Wait until you hear about the musculocutaneous nerve. So now the musculocutaneous nerve. If you've looked at these nerves before, you'll know that the musculocutaneous nerve is the nerve from the lateral branch of the brachial plexus. So, you know, it's coming from up here somewhere. And it's musculocutaneous. It runs deep, deep to biceps. Not on top of it like I'm doing here. This is just because I can't take my skin off. So the musculocutaneous nerve runs deep to biceps brachii, so it's innervating the muscles of the anterior compartment of the arm, so the elbow flexors, biceps and all those guys. That's its muscular job, that's the musculo part. But then when it crosses the elbow, it continues as the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm then is going to carry sensory innervation from the skin on the lateral side of the forearm. The medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm, and it's a continuation of the musculocutaneous nerve. That's where it gets its cutaneous part of its name from. Bum, bum, bum. So these two again, they overlap anteriorly, so they've got, we've got plenty of coverage here. The only place we don't have coverage is back here, so we're going to need another posterior nerve, aren't we? So, that could be the right length. There is a posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Guess what nerve it branches from. Yeah, it comes from the radial nerve. So the radial nerve is doing all of this posterior compartment stuff. Not anatomically accurate, right? But it gets the point across, hopefully. So the forearm then has medial, lateral and posterior cutaneous nerves of the forearm or medial, lateral and posterior antebrachial cutaneous nerves. Now, have you spotted the pattern? There are three cords in the brachial plexus and there are three cutaneous nerves of the arm and three cutaneous nerves of the forearm. And the medial cutaneous nerves of the arm and the forearm both come from the medial cord the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm and the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm come from the radial nerve, which is the nerve of the posterior cord. Um, and then it breaks down a little bit, doesn't it? But the musculocutaneous nerve is the nerve of the lateral cord and that becomes the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. But the, the lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, part of it's from the radial nerve, part of it's from the auxiliary nerve. Anyway. That's it though. Look at that. It's a really complicated diagram in textbooks and I've made it so simple. Maybe not. The flip side of that is that I don't think any of the models in the lab have cutaneous nerves on. Right, what about the hand then? We've got to the wrist. What about the hand? Well, the hand has a similar theme and then there are three nerves running into the hand. We have the, the median nerve, which runs through the carpal tunnel. So it's, it's deep to the flexor retinaculum here. Uh, we have the ulnar nerve, so if I'm in the anatomical position, the ulna is on this side, the radius is on that side. So the ulnar nerve is going to run into the hand on the little finger side. And then we have the radial nerve. And the radial nerve, the superficial branch of the radial nerve, is going to run into the hand up here. So what happens? Well, how do you test those nerves? If you wanted to test the median nerve, you could test the sensation of the skin around here, around the base of the thumb. 
and in fact the the median nerve carries sensory innervation from the the tips of the first three digits and over the tops there and it also carries sensory innervation from from this side of the fourth digit so that's the me that's the median nerve and now the ulnar nerve meets so the ulnar nerve as I said is coming in from the little finger side that's carrying cutaneous innervation back from the little finger and this side the ulnar side of the fourth digit so that's where the the cutaneous innervation of the ulnar nerve and the median nerve meet down here okay so you could test the ulnar nerve by testing sensation around this region fairly confidently what about the radial nerve well the radial nerve is on the posterior side so the rate the superficial branch of the radial nerve is going to carry sensory innervation back from the skin around here right on the kind of the posterior surface of the thumb on the opposite side to where the median nerve is so radial nerve median nerve ulnar nerve i've got a whole e-learning resource about that somewhere i should link to it in the in the text okay here's the other idea about dermatomes then so um, dermatomes described regions of skin innervated by nerves from certain spinal cord segments, right? Um, if you want to see a dermatome map, go and look it up online. There's loads of dermatome maps. There are a couple of different major types, but the concept is the same, is that you can test the functioning at different levels of the spinal cord by testing sensation of different regions of skin on a dermatome map. Now, we saw that the supraclavicular nerve that we started with up here came from C3 and C4. And we saw that the intercostobrachial nerve down here came from the T2 spinal nerve level. And, so, I don't know if I can fold my arm, but in the embryo, when there was a little limb bud, um, it was very nice and neat and organised and the, the dermatome, the stripy dermatome pattern of nervous innervation to the surface of the embryo was stripy just like it is for the rest of the body. And then as the limb has extended and got a couple of folds in it, it's got confused and more complicated. But you can follow a simple idea is that the skin here is innervated by C3, C4. But as we go down here, the skin here is going through cutaneous nerves running back to levels C5 and C6 and C7 and C8 and C8, T1 until we get back here to T2. Do you see what I mean? So C3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, T1, T2 are mirrored in the skin as we go around the limb in this position. That's the way to remember it. Remember the dermatome maps are kind of an average. Um, the dermatome, the region of skin, innervated by branches of a spinal nerve level, they, they overlap, you know, they're not distinct boundaries and they're different in people. But by testing or looking at all these different levels, you, you get an idea of the function of the different um, spinal cord levels and the peripheral nerves running back to them. <sighs> Once again, I struggle to understand whether I've been any use at all. But that's the concept. If you, if you look at the diagram in a textbook, it looks incredibly complicated. But essentially up here we have supraclavicular, uh, intercostobrachial nerve and axillary nerve. We have medial, lateral and posterior cutaneous nerves of the arm. We have medial, lateral and posterior cutaneous nerves of the forearm. And we have median, ulnar and radial nerves. And that's the pattern of innovation of skin of the upper limb. If I was useful, great. If I wasn't useful, um, sorry. Might have been better if I was in the lab. Anyway, right, that's done. See if I can edit something out of this mess. Um, see you guys next week.